What do the next couple of things have in common? An iPod, a Tamagotchi, an SUV, flippos, energy drinks, and Twitter. The answer is simple. Nobody knew them, and all of a the sudden they took over. They were a new trend. Does this sound familiar? This guy thinks it does. To him it sounds a bit like this. Or more precisely, like this. Exactly, like an epidemic. But what is an epidemic? And can the same models used to describe an epidemic be used to describe trends and hypes? First off, what precisely is an epidemic? According to the dictionary, it's a disease affecting many persons at the same time and spreading from person to person in a locality where the disease is not permanently prevalent. These guys, Kermack and McKendrick, made a mathematical model in 1927 to describe the spread of these transmittable diseases. It's a pretty simple model that works surprisingly well. Let's look into it. It basically says we have three groups of people, the healthy, the infected and the sick. Let's take the flu here as an example. Of course, we have the healthy people. These are the persons that aren't infected with the virus. Then we have the infected. These are the persons that are infected with the flu virus but aren't sick yet. They live their everyday life but can infect healthy persons with the flu, in this case, by sneezing. After a certain incubation time that is disease dependent, an infected person gets ill. Then he stays in bed all day and won't infect other people. The question now is, how do these three groups evolve over time? We have three variables, the healthy G, the infected I and the sick Z. The total number of people is constant. The healthy can only be infected by an infected person. The more infected persons, the more healthy people will get infected. Kermack and McKendrick set this in the following equation. Here we see a formula for G, Z and I. They only have two variables. If we combine these three formulas, we get the following figure. At the start of an epidemic, we only have healthy people, so I and Z are zero. This changes when the first person gets infected. Here we see an example for A is 0.02 and B is 0.03. So the spread of a disease only depends on the numbers A and B. Let's look at HIV as an example. Here we see that the time from infection to getting sick is very long, so B is very high. People that know they have an HIV infection have a low A, they don't spread the virus. The people that don't know they are infected have a high A. Prevention also depends on this principle. Get people aware that they are HIV infected. Here we see a model where people get regular tests. The purple line, no tests at all, the red line, or where some people get regular tests. The yellow line. If everyone gets tested, we immediately see that the epidemic decreases, while with certain people getting regular tests, it stabilizes around a higher equilibrium. So we see that a small change, namely having more people tested, can have a huge impact on an epidemic. Let's get back to this guy, Malcolm Gladwell. He states in his book The Tipping Point that marketing can also be looked at from an epidemic point of view. The only difference is we don't want the disease to die out, we want everyone to get infected by the product we're trying to sell. Malcolm Gladwell has made a theory about social change. He says in his book that human behavior or social change develops like viruses do. But before these changes can happen on an enormous scale, there is a tipping point that is the beginning of every phenomenal change. But what are the ingredients of the tipping point? Malcolm Gladwell's theory of social change has two laws, the law of the few and the stickiness factor. Let us further explain the two laws separately with some theories that Gladwell has found for the tipping point involved. The law of the few means that 20% of the people do 80% of the work, and in this case, of spreading the virus, some people just matter more than other people do, especially the people we call connectors, maven and salesmen. Why are connectors so important to explain epidemics? The answer is simple. They spread the virus. They are the host carriers of the virus, like for example mosquitoes or drinking water. Mavens are the kind of people that are experts in their field and want to share their information with everybody that wants to hear it. They are the ones that formulate the message in a way that people can understand and use that information. They are responsible that the virus can affect people. Salesmen are the people that persuade others to act in a certain way. They have the talent that they can convince people, not necessarily by the strength of their reason, of arguments, but they are charismatic and very strong in non-verbal communication. 
The stickiness factor is a second law that states that for a height the virus must have the sp specific content of a message that renders its impact memorable. It's really hard to define and the hardest part to create to set a social change in motion. Why does Pinot of Sesame Street keep little kids' attention so well and teach toddlers how to spell and count? So how can we use this knowledge of tipping points to market products? The real life example is Smith's Chips. They were just selling chips until they launched a new campaign to promote their chips in 1995. They launched the Flippo. Within a year their turnover increased with 25% and their competitor Crokey Chips lost market share of about 10-23%. to 23%. The little Flippos had a high stickiness factor and kids proved to be the best pop possible spreaders of the virus. So a small change can make a big difference. So finally we see that hypes can be described as epidemics and that the same models can be used to describe them. The law of the few accounts for the factor A and the stickiness factor for the factor B.